Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the February 2023 iThemes Plugin Roundup here on iThemes Training. We've been doing this series now for many, many years. I believe we started in 2014. We're just about to come up to nine years of plugin roundups. Pretty amazing. Uh, and we've done many hundreds of plugins. We usually feature about 12 to 15 every month. And uh, these plugins basically come from the plugin repository, uh, the WordPress plugin directory. So we take a look at plugins typically that have been added to or recently updated in that WordPress plugin directory that we can all uh, look at for free and uh, bring you a list of the ones we think are pretty interesting. So the caveat is, as always, right there at the top of the handout that we have not thoroughly tested these plugins, okay? We haven't really looked at them uh, very hard other than to say this looks pretty interesting and you might want to check it out for yourself. So we're not guaranteeing the code or the guaranteeing that it's accessible or anything like that. Uh, but we just thought these are interesting and might be able to serve a purpose in uh, the way that you use WordPress. Uh, so we've been talking in the pre-show about WordCamp Birmingham. That was a success this past weekend. Uh, that is my local camp here in Birmingham, Alabama. And I was the organizer for speakers for this past weekend, and we had a great time. Above average content, I would say, and several folks that are on the webinar now were there as presenters and attendees, and it was great to see Sue and Beth and Paul and uh, Melanie there in uh, Birmingham. Uh, really great weekend together. I am wearing the WP Y'all official t-shirt from this weekend. <laughs> That's what we call WordCamp Birmingham, WP Y'all. If you search the hashtag WP Y'all, you will find a picture of me dead on the stage because I was a murder victim this last weekend uh, in the VIP dinner. We had dinner detectives there uh, at uh, uh, for our uh, uh, speaker sponsor dinner the night before the conference, and I was the first victim, and it was a lot of fun. So just search Twitter. You'll find me laying there. I think it was Amber Hines, our accessibility expert. Who took that picture? Anyway, we got a bunch of fun plugins to share with you. Uh, and the other thing I'm going to mention before we get to it is uh, I spent the morning getting ready for our free webinar that we have tomorrow here on iThemes Training, all about AI. And I am really excited about this uh, webinar that is coming up tomorrow. If you haven't registered for this, let me drop that in the chat. It's a free webinar. And basically, we're going to be exploring some of these AI tools that are out there uh, a lot with ChatGPT, but also with a bunch of other free WordPress plugins that leverage AI right there inside of WordPress. So join us for that webinar tomorrow at 1 p.m. Central, this same time. Uh, if you haven't registered for it, you can do so right there at the link in the chat. Well, that's enough of that. Let's start talking about plugins, shall we? That's why you're all here. It is February 2023, and we've got uh, 12, 13 plugins uh, in this roundup that I really like. And we're going to start off with a couple of WooCommerce plugins. And uh, I've gotten questions about this from time to time in office hours about whether there was a plugin that would allow you to do gift cards for the, your WooCommerce store, or maybe just store credit. And this is a plugin that does both of those things because really they are kind of the same thing, right? Like a gift card is a thing, but it's really all about, I don't have to pay as much when I check out, right? And so that's what this plugin does. And it does it pretty well, especially for a free plugin. So it is called store credit gift cards for WooCommerce. And oh, you know what? I forgot to mention that we have a new version of WP Nathan out there. So we've been talking about this for a while. We were going to have it live for last month's plugin roundup, but we didn't get it done and a lot of things going on. And so this is our Marvel Cinematic Universe themed ver uh, WP Nathan. And so <laughs> we've had the old WP Nathan out for quite a while. This one, all the content is generated by chat GPT and uh, really funny headlines. You're welcome to just sort of take a look through some of these like Spider-Man GoFundMe campaign breaks records, obviously authored by John Jonah Jameson Jr. Four J's. Uh, that uh, perhaps you recognize. Anyway, uh, so this is all cadence blocks all throughout um, the thing. We got a WooCommerce shop with some fun things. Now, gradually, we'll we'll build this WP Nathan up like we did the others, but we have a few fun products in the store, uh, you know, to play around with, and we'll be getting to that pretty soon. So anyway, that's out there, WPNathan.com. 
And we're going to start by jumping into that store with this uh, plugin from PI Credit, uh, PI Web Solutions called Store Credit and uh, gift, commer- uh, gift Cards for WooCommerce. Let's go ahead and get in there, shall we? Um, activating the plugin, as we always know, is uh, the first step to success. So let's activate Store Credit. There it is, Store Credit for WooCommerce. So what this is going to do right here under our WooCommerce link, we now have an item for store credit. And this basically gives us some of the settings. So uh, a couple of options here. Do we want to automatically apply the store credit? So if this store credit is linked to an email address of a known user and that user is logged in, do we want to automatically show the store credit there in the checkout process? I think so. We should auto apply that. Uh, You also have the ability to customize the email that goes out if, um, you know, if and when store credit is assigned. Also, if the store credit or uh, gift card has an expiration date, you can set it to send a reminder email. Hey, your store credit's going to expire, and there's all the things about that. Uh, Also, uh, of course, the author is pitching us some related plugins and so forth. Uh, But so where do you set up the store credit? It's set up like a coupon. So we're going to go here under marketing and coupons. And what we will see is that we have a a code set up as store credit. Let me just jump into this so you can see how this works. We set this up ahead of time, just a random string. It's called store credit. And here's what the plugin does. So we actually right here have an option under the coupon data as this is a coupon that works as store credit. So there's the amount, there's an expiration date, and you can say, you know, um, is it, I'm going to say it has to be on, you know, a purchase above $100 or a percent, you know, whatever. So you can actually set where uh, those discounts can be used or like the maximum percentage of the the order for which this credit can be used is 50% or whatever. We're just going to leave no restrictions for now. Uh, You can also, just like any coupon, uh, set it to a minimum maximum spend, uh, et cetera. It also has, um, let's see here. There's our credit usage that this plugin adds where it links this particular uh, code to my email address. And so I'm logged in. And if I go to the store, it's set to automatically apply the credit. Let's find something that's about $200 in the store. I think there is something. Uh, Let's see. Let's use it for, uh, let's use it for Thor's hammer. And we'll view our cart. And we're automatically applying the discount. So notice what happens right there, that coupon is automatically applied. I didn't have to do anything. It knows that I'm logged in with the email address that applies to that coupon, uh, and it just works. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can set up a gift card item. We didn't do that, but you can set up a gift card item that can be purchased in the store and assign store credit to a person's email address, and that would send them an email. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, So that is store credit gift cards for WooCommerce from PI Web Solutions. Any questions or comments about that? A lot of chatter in the chat about people ordering the battle axe. I mean, you can do it. Uh, Paul, that is an excellent question. I don't know how you can ship Thor's hammer because only Thor can pick it up. Uh, This is going to be one of those things where it's a willing suspension of disbelief uh, where we're just going to go with the flow. Okay, any any other questions or comments about this one? Pretty nice little plug-in, does what it's supposed to do, uh, and does it pretty well. All righty. Next up is another little WooCommerce plug-in, and I think this one uh, is going to be popular for any of your clients or you uh, that might have an order picking process. So, you know, WooCommerce does a pretty good job. Like, you know, it shows you the... Um, the list of items in the order, but wouldn't it be nicer if they, like if you, especially for orders that have a lot of different items, wouldn't it be nicer if you, it was easier to pick those items for certain orders? And that's what this is going to do. It, it 
sets up a, I won't say it's perfect, but it's pretty easy to use an order picking process for the orders that come in. So let's go ahead and activate this plugin. Ooh, order picking for WooCommerce. And we have a couple of orders set up in here. I'm gonna skip that. And you, you have some options here. Like you can, you know, the order of picking, what's the status for WooCommerce when the order is ready to be picked. Uh, and you've got some other things here. These are premium features for the premium plugin. Let's take a look at orders and you can see the process. All right, so notice we have a couple of these that are set waiting fulfillment. So let's go up here to order picking. This is where we kick off the process. Oh, please choose the orders, yes. We'll select all of our orders, order picking. It's loading them. Ah, look, now we have this nice interface where we can say, got it, got it, market is fulfilled. Boom, isn't that cool? So you can even, you, this would even work on a phone and it kind of orients itself nicely to a phone device where you can pick, pick, it gives you the picture of the item and then mark it as fulfilled when you're done. Or you can just bounce out of the, uh, the modal window there. You can see what's happening here. It's fulfilled, ready to go. Uh, this one is awaiting fulfillment. You can actually access this too from the individual order screen and go to order picking. Boom, boom, done. Look at that, pretty cool. So if you have a situation where uh, you have a client that is filling orders themselves, uh, this is a great way to make it easier to just pick those orders through. So that is order picking for WooCommerce by Powerful WP. Uh, questions or comments about that? Uh, there is a premium version that has all the things starting at about 50 bucks a site per year. All right. Next down the list, we have a couple of analytics options. The, this new, uh, there's a whole new wave of uh, privacy focused analytics uh, that is surfacing uh, because of the need that's generated by areas in which privacy concerns um, cause you to be very careful about what analytics platform that you're going to use. Of course, you know, the big deal is GDPR and Google's Universal Analytics, which is being completely retired uh, in about mid-year this year in favor of the more privacy-focused Google Analytics 4. But a lot of folks are saying, I'm just done with Google. Like, I'm done with all of the privacy concerns. I just don't want to be any part of that whatsoever. And there have been a number of uh, Word, uh, WordPress-based analytic plugins that we've talked about. We did one at the end of last year called Independent Analytics that is quite good. Uh, we really, really like that one. Now there's a couple I'm gonna show you today, maybe not quite as good as that one, but they are nevertheless free, good analytics uh, plugins that work right from within WordPress. The data never leaves your WordPress install. And like this one is cookie-less, so it's not tracking IP addresses. It's simply giving you visitor statistics. Now, one of the things that, you, that you'll realize about uh, in a privacy first analytics product like these or like independent analytics is that you tend not to get, I mean, it's not, they're not as feature rich um, as, you know, some of the other, you know, like a Google analytics for, for example, but if what you're looking for is just, I mean, honestly, what many site owners want is how many people are visiting my site like this month, how many people took a look at my site and maybe what pages are posted they visit. That's exactly what these do. They do it at no cost and they do it in a privacy focused way. So let's take a look first at cookie-less analytics. Now we've had this running for a couple of days uh, on the site uh, just so we could see, you know, kind of get, um, get some data. So this is actually going to show a dashboard widget. And then there's a link here under the dashboard. Uh, so we'll click here and take a look. Here is our cookie-less analytics um, dashboard widget. So uh, y'all go on over there to wpnathan.com and we'll get to see, uh, check this live traffic. So it sees me on the site right now. There's been 42 page views today, uh, all on the desktop. And here are the pages 
that have been visited. So that's pretty cool. How about the last seven days? We're thinking about it here. Do, 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 still thinking about it. Wow, that's really taking a minute. Uh-oh, we may have a problem. I wonder if I've got a WP Nathan problem. I think something has happened to WP Nathan. Okay, no, oh, boom. That's not good. That, my friends, is a VPS problem. I don't know what's going on there. Okay, stop going to WP Nathan. <laughs> Interesting. Well, let's view some detailed analytics and go there. Yeah, that, that's odd. It should not have crashed. I've got to have got to take a look at this from the hosting perspective. So uh, we have some more interesting things here. We have some desktop versus mobile uh, over the over this period, which we can set uh, page views, sessions, average time on the site. Uh, referrers, so any referral traffic will be tracked here. Uh, that's just simply from the HTTP referral header that comes in uh, with every browser visit. Uh, and then we have our uh, top pages. So it's, again, very basic analytics. But uh, honestly, for, for many clients and just for, for a basic site, this might be all you need. Uh, so why bring in the weight of you know, calling an external script from Google Analytics, and who knows what's actually happening behind the scenes with privacy. I mean, you know, who knows? So, you know, this is a good option to, um, you know, to bring in a privacy-focused analytics to your website. So it's cookie-less analytics. Now, there's another one that is similar here. It is called Simplest Analytics uh, from Stefan Clays. Now, uh, this again, it is a um, it, it does not connect to any services outside your website. It's all WordPress based, and it's going to track essentially the same things. Now, one thing that this one does that the other doesn't is it does include some WooCommerce data, which is kind of cool. It also gives you the ability on the free version to track up to five campaigns. So you can use a UTM code here if you know what that is and how to use it. You can also set up five different events. So for example, if you have a primary call to action button on your website, you can very easily set that up as an event to see, oh, I had 50 visitors and that event of clicking my primary call to action uh, is only, you know, like it got five clicks or whatever. So yes, this is brand new. Uh, it is, it was just released, like just released <laughs> like in the last few weeks. And again, th this is, this is the both the beauty, it's the double-edged sword of the plugin roundup, right? So we find these new plugins that could be rock stars or they might be trash. <laughs> you know, we take a look at them and see, you know, see how they're doing. But again, this is one of those that's fewer than 10 installs. So that's that's a red flag. But again, it's brand new. Uh, so anyway, let's take a look at simplest analytics. Let's go. It is down, it lives down here under the web analytics link. And here. Look here, there's the 170 visits in our time period, which is here. Uh, visitors, tracked events. Got a couple little graphs. It's going to get better once we get some historical data in there. Uh, here's our uh, page views. Look at that. Kind of nice. We can sort by who gets the visits. Kind of cool. We can go to WooCommerce and take a look at, um, had a couple sales. Look at that. That's kind of nice. The referrers that made a sale, no referrer because we went to the site directly. So kind of cool. Uh, raw data. This is all the actual tracking stuff. So you can actually get into it and see what's actually going on behind the scenes. Now, here in the settings area is where you can set up your, uh, your campaigns or your um, events. So with a simple query string on a link somewhere, just like you would use, it doesn't have to be a UTM code. That's a Google thing. Uh, this can be anything. You would call it campaign equals whatever, like it says here, and you can start to, that campaign will start to show up in your analytics. 
Um, and uh, this, so this is the URL parameter, campaign equals, and then th so this would be campaign equals iThemes. So you would link to this as WPNathan.com question mark campaign equals iThemes. And any links that came through that would be tracked in my report. So it's pretty cool. Uh, here's our events where you basically set up just like you would in Google Analytics, find a class or an ID that uh, is your conversion metric that you're trying to track. So very easy to set up. You just put it in there and it works. And you get up to five of those uh, in the free version as well. So questions about uh, do any of these do like send client reporting? No. These are basic, basic, basic built into WordPress uh, analytics systems. So this is something I would encourage the client to go just jump into WordPress and take a look at. Uh, so, you know, very basic uh, WordPress based privacy first analytics. Uh, Barney, how much of a load would this be? Not a lot because it's all happening inside of WordPress. It's not loading anything externally when you load a page. It's just, when the page is loaded, it's doing, it's making some database changes to track the uh, the view of the pages. Now, this I would guess on, you know, and again, I haven't like done a deep dive under the hood for the code of all these things, probably nor would you want me to. Um, but like these WordPress-based analytics, I would imagine are better on a lower traffic site. Like if your site is getting 100,000, you know, visitors a day, this is, I mean, that could quickly overload the database, right? But if it's a, a basic site, like many of us host, that's just, it's a brochure site for a client or a, you know, moderately traffic site, you know, a thousand views a day, even maybe something like this could work really well. Um, but I, I don't think if it's a super high traffic site, I don't think you'd want to use a WordPress-based analytic. Does that help? Any other questions about these two interesting WordPress-based analytics plugins. All right. Um, okay, let's move on to the next one, which is, okay, this one's interesting. Now, I, I like and don't like this plugin all at the same time. Like, it's a little tough to get your hands around, but... How many of you have a client and they like to, you know, maybe they have just a few events every year. It's not enough to install like the events calendar or some big event management plugin on there. And maybe they just want a blog post or a landing page, but they would like the ability in an easy way for people to add that event to the calendar. Right. Uh, to like to the. Like for a user to go on there, they view the event. Oh, I can add this to my calendar with this button, right? So that's what this does. And it's interesting. Now, you do have to kind of get into the weeds. This is not something that I would say a client, for example, could do by themselves unless they're more of an advanced user. This is something that probably you as a developer would, would need to add and manage. But it's like once you see what's going on, it's fairly simple. So let me go in here and actually activate the add to calendar button. And then I will go over to the page we have set up for this. And we'll take a look. Okay. So here's just a page and there's a button. And this is, this is a block, by the way. Uh, it is... Add to calendar button block right there. Mm. And when I click this block, this is where it gets a little squirrely, okay? Uh, so I don't know that I would really trust a client to get in here and do this because you do have to manually add these things. So this is what's going to go on to the person's calendar. Uh, the name of the event is MCU event. The start date is this date. Which calendar options am I going to allow? These. Uh, the location is Stark Tower. Now, where did all this come from, you may ask? Well, it came from the plugin page. Uh, and there is a, um, let's see, where did we go here? Or is it someplace else? I think there's a documentation is probably on the site.
configuration. There it is. Okay, so here's all the values that you can put in there. Start time, end time, you know, location, status, is it confirmed, cancel, you know, whatever. Um, you can do all sorts of things in here to fill out all the forms in the calendar. So let's see what this looks like on the front end. It's going to look like probably how you would expect it to look. Boom, I mouse over and look at that. I can just select the calendar I want to add it to. So if I want to add it to my Google Calendar, boom, look at that. It filled in all the things, Stark Tower, an all-day event. There you go. It just knew what to do with it. So it's pretty cool. Uh, if, you know, if you don't need a full event calendar, but yet you still want to add um, – uh, an add to calendar button somewhere. This is a really easy thing to do. And look, I put a little check mark there because I did it. That's kind of nice. Um, Christine is asking, can this button be tied also to send an RSVP to the event? No, this is only to allow a, a user to add whatever data is in here to their calendar. Now, what you could do uh, is, you know, if you wanted to a person to sign up for something, I've got a plugin for that in this roundup. It's not, it, it's simple, but it might work for you. Or you just use a form. Uh, Doug, yeah, like for an annual festival website, add this to my calendar. Or it's a, you know, a, a company that hosts a quarterly something or other, and they got a blog post about it. Add this to my calendar. Boom, there it is. It's just really easy to use. So there you go. That, uh, save the date. Is, yeah, exactly, Melanie. So add the calendar button by Jens, uh, and uh, very easy to set up and use. It's a block. Uh, pretty cool. Any other questions or comments about this one? Uh, let me remind you, if you're, when you're chatting uh, in the chat, uh, look right above where you type the message. And some of you are chatting only to me. It'll say hosts and panelists. That just comes to me. But if you'll drop that down and choose everyone, then everyone in the chat can see what you're typing. Okay. Let's move along to the next plugin in the list, which is called Site Toolkit. Site Toolkit. Now, those of you that have been around the plugin roundup for a while, you probably know that I am not a fan of what I would call a kitchen sink plugin, which is, I would call that like a plugin that does 8,000 different things, none of which might really be related. It's like the developer took all the snippets they could find and just put them into a plugin. Like, I, I'm not a fan of those. And this is kind of a kitchen sink plugin, but I kind of like it. Uh, so I will mention that a number of the items in this plugin are also some of the custom snippets that I provided to you as members in the starter site course last year. And I've not tested to see if there's any conflict between using this plugin and using those functions. I don't think there will be, but there might be. So just be aware of that. Um, but this is a plugin that gives you a UI to do some of those things that those custom functions, those snippets that I gave you last year uh, do. So Let's just activate it and you'll see what I mean. So we activated the plugin and it's down here at the bottom with the hammer icon and it is called Site Toolkit. So let's just walk through some of the options. Uh, you may remember that some of the snippets I gave you were to clean up the WordPress head and get rid of a lot of things that WordPress loads by default that really aren't useful like emojis. I mean, do you really like, unless you're using comments and you want emojis in the comments of WordPress, you don't need that. And by default, WordPress loads like 50K worth of emojis on every page load because it's part of core WordPress. It's like we can disable emojis. We can remove our SS feed links. We can disable the REST API. We can remove all of these other like RSD, the really simple discovery links and others, you know, uh, header links from there. We can remove the WordPress version from the page meta. We can also... Um, replace the style and JavaScript version with the file version. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, that can help with caching. So something like, like if you ever go to your site and you find that the CSS is kind of wonky because of a, a page caching problem, this might be able to help that because it's going to append a version number on the end of the CSS file. So uh, that's some of the, the things there. That's kind of cool. In the SEO area, take a look at this. 
you can, you, do we want to use a pretty permalink for search? Um, so that's kind of a nice thing. Um, you can do an if modified since header. Uh, in other words, like modified date up in the header to help uh, search engines know when the page is modified. And you can also force all images to have an alt text uh, here by that. Uh, it has some options for the archives of the site. Do we want to get rid of the, the prefix of uh, archive in the title of the page? Do we want to redirect attachment pages, uh, redirect author date and tag archives? You have the options to do that. Uh, in the dashboard, do we want to get rid of all the WordPress dashboard widgets? So all these things that uh, are in WordPress by default, many of which I've hidden here, and you probably hide too. If we hit yes, it gets rid of those. Boom. So they're gone, gone. They don't even show up here anymore. So all the like news and those sorts of things that it hides those right there. Also, we can create our own custom dashboard widget. Hello world. I can type. And then some Ipsum text just to have something to put in there. Ooh, that's a lot. That's probably way too much. Let's just put a picture in there. Oh, it didn't take the image, bummer, but it did take the text. You can probably put HTML in there too. So easy way to create a dashboard widget, kind of cool. Uh, also, we have some additional options here. Let me get over to there. Do we want to add uh, a thumbnail column to posts? Meaning, look, we can see the post thumbnail over here. That's kind of nice. Uh, same thing to pages. What about uh, our login area? This is where you can change the WordPress login URL, which I think security does as well. Uh, it doesn't really help for security to do this, but instead of your client having to remember wp-admin or wp-login.php, you could just call this let me in or something right there and give them a, a quick link to log into their site uh, with this. Also, you can restrict the upload size on this final tab, or it, I'm sorry, it cleans the file name. So if there's any weird characters in the file name that might of, of an uploaded file that might cause WordPress some trouble, this will just sanitize that right away. So a lot of different options, bunch of different snippets, all contained in one plugin. Um, not bad, honestly. There's some pretty useful things in there. That is Site Toolkit. Any questions or comments about that one? It does some things, right? All right, let's move down to the next plugin, which is called When Last Login. When Last Login. So we, um, there was a question in office hours in the past month or so. I think it was Beth Livingston who talked about, can I see when people are logging into my site? Was that you, Beth? I think it was. Yeah. And we did a plugin last month called User Toolkit, I think it was called. Uh, that drops in the, um, actually, I think that plugin is active on this site right now. Yeah, so, mm. no, it's not. That's the plugin I'm about to show you. Uh, but the user toolkit, and it does other things, but it also drops in that login date, which is helpful. Uh, this plugin actually has, uh, this is its core plugin, has a couple of add-ons that are also free. Um, called export user records and welcome emails that do that and a little bit more, but it's really just focused on this last login. So I have all three of these plugins set up. I've talked primarily about this one, when last login, that's the core plugin. And if we go down here to when last login, it does have a couple links to add on these add-on plugins, the two free ones, and they have some premium ones as well. We're just going to focus on these today. Uh, where we can go in here and we can export our records. So I want to know who's logged into my website and what and 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 so forth. I can export 
my user records and my login records either to a CSV or a JSON, which is kind of nice. I also have the ability here to create a welcome email. So the first time they log in, hey, welcome to WP Nathan, put a logo in there and put some text in there. And then, you know, if there's a footer, whatever, um, it will send them an email saying, hey, glad you logged in, blah, 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 blah. So uh, a nice little option here, if you need, if, if you want to track who's logging into your site, you can do that right here. And it sorts by the latest time. It is also tracking IP addresses. You can turn that off if you want to right here. So if you uncheck that, it anonymizes their IP address so that you can comply with GDPR. So I don't think we, I mean, I don't really care about their IP address. So I would not just as a matter of best practice, don't track any information that you don't actually need. So I would probably turn that off, but you can pull in their IP address if you want to. So that is called when last login by Yoohoo plugins. When I saw the name of this plugin developer, I was suddenly thirsty for a cold chocolatey drink. Anybody else know what I'm talking about there? All right. Any other questions or comments on that one before we move along? Okay. Then moving along. Okay. This is a toolbox plugin. Uh, and for those of you that are relatively new to plugin roundup, a toolbox plugin is something we call uh, a plugin that you might not use immediately, but it's one that has a very particular task. It's usually a very simple plugin. And it's just one that I want to keep over in my toolbox because one day I might need this. And this is a really helpful one. It is called Media Count. Now, uh, as the name indicates, this is a plugin that counts your media files. And that's all it does. Uh, but have you ever logged into a site, maybe one that you're evaluating of whether or not you're going to support it or not? Or it's the first time you've looked at this and you want to know, all right, how big is this media library? Um, how many images do we have? I mean, you can see the total number, but wouldn't it be nice to know, oh, do they have any Word docs or PDFs in there? Or is there any video or audio in there? This does that real quick, one page, boom, there it is. So let's activate media count. It is, and it's going to give us a menu link right over here. And there it is. So here is the current library of WP Nathan, 13 JPEGs, three pings, 25 WebPs, one GIF, two SVGs. No documents uploaded here, but we could see if there were DocX or Doc or all these different file types, PowerPoint, zip files, tarballs. Uh, down here also the various types of media formats, MP4, MP3, WAV, blah, 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 uh, with a total size of 419 megabytes. That's a big media library actually for 50 files. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. That's a really heavy media library. Uh, but there you go. Uh, a bird's eye view of what's going on in the uh, media library by file type. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to know if they've got giant PDFs sitting in their media library. This will quickly uh, let you see if they have any at all. <laughs> Stacy says she has a couple of sites that might crash if something counted all the crap that was in there. <laughs> Love that. Oh, that's great. Um, anyway, that's media library count. I think it could be quite useful, and it's one that I have remembered, or that I am remembering for the uh, old plugin toolkit at some point in the future. Any other questions, comments about that one before we move along? All right. Next up is a very powerful little plugin that uh, solved a very particular problem for me a few weeks ago. It is called Simple Cloudflare Turnstile by Elliot Sowersby in ReliWP. Now, Elliot Sowersby is a very well-known uh, UK-based, I believe, WordPress developer. And uh, what he has done is taken the new Cloudflare Turnstile uh, CAPTCHA alternative and uh, built a plugin for it in WordPress. Now, just as a note, Cadence Forms and iTheme Security uh, include Turnstile. So if you're using Cadence, You'll note in the new Cadence form block, there's the ability to drop in a Cloudflare turnstile CAPTCHA. It is way better. 
way better than the other CAPTCHA alternatives out there because oftentimes Cloudflare knows right away just by this uh, person's IP address or their, uh, their behavior uh, that whether this is a bot or not. And it even without presenting a CAPTCHA challenge, <clears throat> I can frequently uh, deal with bad, with bad traffic. Uh, if you've been testing Turnstile at all, like I have, I like this a lot. It is so much better than uh, the other CAPTCHA alternatives. iTheme Security also includes uh, Turnstile as a CAPTCHA alternative, um, and it can be embedded on the login page and on the password reset and on a comment form and on a new user signup page. Uh, so why would we feature a plugin on iThemes training that does something similar? Well, because... This does one thing that currently iTheme Security doesn't do, and that is WooCommerce forms, the checkout process of WooCommerce. I found this plugin when I had a client site that was under attack by the WooCommerce bot spam, where they, you know, they'll place a thousand orders in five minutes, trying these different credit cards to see if, you know, one of these stolen credit cards will process using your WooCommerce site. This stopped it in its tracks. It just stopped it, uh, and it's fantastic. Now, by the way, I have talked to Timothy Jacobs, the lead developer of iTheme Security, and uh, the, the WooCommerce function will be coming to iTheme Security. It's on the map in the near term. So here in the next few months, we'll see this feature also added to iTheme Security. But in the meantime, this is a great plugin to be aware of. It is simple to set up. Let me just show you the settings. Let's see here, simple Cloudflare turnstile. Well, it's not in here. Let's add it. By the way, if you're new to the plugin roundup, uh, sometimes you can't find exactly what you're looking for in the plugin directory, even if you search by the full plugin name. So a hint is to also copy the byline of the author. And that almost always gets you the right result. Boom, right there. Now, by the way, Elliot also has this reCAPTCHA for WooCommerce that will let you add the Google reCAPTCHA to the WooCommerce checkout process. This is the same functionality that WooCommerce itself charges $29 per site for a core plugin, which just infuriates me. But anyway, uh, yeah, th there, if you want to use reCAPTCHA, you can do that here. But here's the turn style, and it's very, very simple to set up and use. Right here, Cloudflare turn style. You simply go into, once you have a Cloudflare, a free Cloudflare account set up, you go to this link, you add your site key and your secret key. You can pick a dark or light theme. Uh, you can put in a custom error message if it fails. And here's where you can put it. WordPress login, the WordPress registration page, reset password, comments various spots on the WooCommerce. And because I have Gravity Forms set up, it knows that I can also enable it right here on all the Gravity Forms. So I don't have to go through and set up uh, turnstiles separately on a Gravity Form. It works really, really well. And uh, like Doug is saying in the chat, it does work on Elementor Forms. Uh, many other um, form types works really, really well. So uh, great plugin from Elliot Soresby, the simple Cloudflare turnstile. Uh, this will stop that WooCommerce spam in its tracks. Uh, we had no more problems once that was set up. All right. Any other questions or comments on that one? Ruby, does it work with elegant themes? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess, are you talking about Divi? Uh, I don't, it doesn't specifically say Divi's form. You'd have to test it. Um, I'm going to guess probably it doesn't unless it says that it does. Barney, can this be added to a cadence form? Uh, well, this plugin, you wouldn't, you would just use the cadence form's own Cloudflare connector. So if you're using, and this goes for any reCAPTCHA. Uh, so let's say, uh, Barney, you want to have this plugin set up to protect like the WordPress login page and everything else. And you also want to have turnstile on the cadence form. Just use the same keys, the site key and the secret key. Put it in both this plugin and the Cadence Form plugin so it's connecting the same way and you're fine. Elizabeth, do you have to have a Cloudflare account? Yes, you have to sign up for a free Cloudflare account 
in order to get the, the, the keys to connect this to the WordPress site. But it's the free level of Cloudflare works just fine. Great questions. Anybody else before we move on? Yes, it does work with Fluent Forms. Okay, moving down the list uh, to a plugin. I was on the fence about this one. Um, John, John is asking how much of that Cloudflare webinar do you have to get through to use this? Um, John, you just <laughs> for those of you that missed it, I had a thorough, I'm going to use that word specifically, a thorough Cloudflare webinar <laughs> last week where it was, I, I should have given this a duct tape alert, right? Because there was a lot in that. I'm dropping the link in the, the chat um, if you missed that. Uh, that, I mean, I presented the webinar, so I'm a little biased, but I think that was probably one of the most uh, information-packed webinars we've had here lately. Uh, I think it was really helpful, and many of you may have to go back and rewatch it because there was a lot. Uh, and I was talking kind of fast. Yeah, I was, because I had a lot to get through. But you can slow down the speed, right? And so the, all you have to do is create an account and follow the link in the plugin to generate your API key, and you're done. You don't have to do any of this. You don't even have to set up a domain in Cloudflare. All you have to do is have an account, and that lets you create the key. Okay. <laughs> all right, so here's the next, uh, the next plugin. It's called Sign Up List by the Internet Managers. I think these guys win the uh, award for the most creative plugin name of the roundup, the Internet Managers. So here's the thing. This is, uh, I think, potentially a very helpful plugin in certain situations. It's going to be a niche plugin uh, because what it does is it allows you to add a sign up list on your website. It's not protected. So you might have to have a protected page or a members area or whatever. Uh, but and it's only one form per site. Now they may add more later. This is like the, the beta release of the plugin, um, but it lets you add a sign up list. So let me go in here and activate the plugin called sign up list. Like I said, it's a brand new, it's the 1.0.0. Like it is the raw version of the plugin. And I have a, a page set up for this. Sign up list, and here's what it looks like. Oh, cannot be displayed. Oh, this one's by invitation only. Let me just look at the block. So here's our block, and here's our form options. It needs to hurry up and display. I think I've got speed issues on WP Nathan ever since we moved this over, and I don't know why that is. There it is. Okay. There's our sign up list form. Okay. You have to visit it by this URL. So that, that was in the settings of this form that we set up. Let me, let's look at that first, shall we? Sign up list. <laughs> Tony Stark signed up. So. All right, it is a, so if we go to that page using that specific link that we got, we should be able to fill out the form. Yes, there it is. So you do have to come to it through the, the specific link that you get when you add the form to the page. This is obviously only shared, you know, only you as the administrator see this. So you send the link and you can get a sign up form and we'll say, uh, Matt, Murdoch, sign up. Boom, add it to the list and they'll show up on the attendee list, which you can export to a CSV. And uh, also you can invite people directly if you want. But again, it's one list per website, only one at a time. So you can set this up where uh, who can sign up? Anybody, but it's going to put a CAPTCHA. 
only the invitees or anyone with the special link. So uh, you can choose any of those options on who's going to see the form to actually be to display. And you have some other options here, some styling and so forth. So that is a, again, it's kind of a niche plugin, but you might have an event or something like that. I could see this being used for sports teams or nonprofits or, you know, places where people are going to sign up for things um, and then take it down and use it somewhere else if you want to. But sign up list, one list per site, but pretty powerful if you need a sign up list. There you go. Questions or comments about that one before we move along? <laughs> Will She-Hulk be there too? Maybe. Who knows? Okay. Next to the last is an interesting little plugin called Convert to Blocks. So uh, if you, like me, have begun the journey of converting some old uh, WordPress sites that were created a million years ago in the classic editor, and you've got a lot of blog posts, and gradually they're getting moved over to the block editor because it is far better, especially just for blog posts um, and orienting content than the classic editor was. Uh, then what happens is something like this. Actually, let me just go to a page. Um, and so we have the block editor working, and let me go and edit. Oh, did I not set up that page again? I did this in a demo and then deleted it. So, all right, we're gonna we're gonna have to do make set up our live demo here live. So, let me with a quick classic editor. I'm going to create a page for demo called convert to blocks. I did this. I'm sure I did this. Hang on a minute. Oh, I did. I just didn't. There it is. I didn't put it underneath the demo parent. There it is. Okay. So let me get out of, well, let's just go to convert to blocks. So this is a page that's just designed in the classic editor, right? It's a page. It could be a post, whatever. There's some text. There's an image. There's some headings, a list, blah, blah, blah. And what happens, let me deactivate the classic editor. What happens the first time you go into a page like this, so classic editor is off. I'm going to refresh the page. That brings it up in the block editor, and it comes up as a classic block, right? Which you can keep in a classic block and edit, or you have to click convert to blocks. So not a big deal to click convert to blocks, but this plugin makes it even a little bit faster. So let's activate convert to blocks. I'm going to leave this page for a moment. And watch what's about to happen. So we simply activate this plugin. Let me refresh the page. Now, notice also what this plugin does is it tells us in which editor these things are created. So here's our classic editor page. And you have to watch this quickly now. Remember, before this plugin was active, it showed the content of the page with a classic block. When we open this page, it's going to automatically parse everything out into the appropriate blocks. Let's click edit and watch. Boom, done. Now there's a heading block, paragraph, paragraph, image block, heading, list block. Everything is as it's supposed to be. And we didn't have to do anything. So all I have to do is update that. And now this page is in the block editor. So there isn't anything that's going to like go through your site and automatically convert all the pages and posts from classic to block, uh, classic editor to block editor. There used to be a plugin like that, um, but it uh, stopped working a while ago. Um, Christine, is the classic editor a plugin that is part of the install? Yeah, it's, it's just the old classic editor plugin. It's the one that's been around since they introduced Gutenberg. Classic editor. So I had it active in order to create the page in the classic editor. Then I deactivated it so we could show this. And it does, yes, you do this manually one page at a time. So here, if we look back at our page list, everything is in the block editor except for this webinar demo page. So I just go in there and hit edit and it's going to convert it 
boom, there's no content. Now it just converts it to the block editor. I hit update and it's done. It may actually have to have some content in it for that to work. So you can kind of go through and see what's been added and what hasn't. Uh, John, what would this plugin do to builder pages? Uh, John, do you mean iThemes Builder or do you mean um, like Beaver Builder or Elementor, a page builder? Beaver Builder, nothing because um, that's actually a good question though. It sees, okay, well, you can see right here, we have a Beaver Builder test page set up that it sees in the block editor, but Beaver Builder. Um, I don't have Beaver Builder active. Beaver Builder supersedes the block editor. So even if the block editor is active, Beaver Builder is still going to supersede it. So see, that goes away and we can launch Beaver Builder. So it won't do anything to it. Uh, Christine, for iThemes Builder, um, this would, the, the WordPress editor works inside the content block in Beaver Builder. Uh, pardon me, in iThemes Builder. So it's just going to affect the area where you have page content and not any of the other layout modules or anything like that. Uh, Peter, if you have the classic editor, editor active, create content in it, and then deactivate the plugin, the block editor will still show the content in the classic block. Correct. Yes. So pretty good plugin. And by the way, this is from 10 up, which is one of the premier development shops in WordPress. Like these are the people Google hired to build the Google site kit plugin, like big stuff. So great plugin by good folks. Uh, one thing I will note, and I actually started using this plugin on a site where we have some stuff to convert. Uh, this does not work on uh it only works on pages and posts. It does not support custom post types by default, but I, I got a little snippet put together that I've shared with you here in this gist uh, to add support to this plugin for particular custom post types. You do have to define your, your CPT slug in this snippet. So if you know what all that means, you know what this does and you can make it work. So that is convert to blocks by 10 up. Any Final questions or comments about that before we get to the last plugin of the roundup, I think. All right. Oh, John has a question I just saw in Q&A. Uh, if we get the save HTML, what should we do? Oh, so uh, the reason I got that save HTML uh, on that page was because there was Beaver Builder content on the page, but Beaver Builder wasn't active. So that wouldn't be the case that we were just trying to demonstrate. I, I had just forgotten to activate the Beaver Builder plugin. You would not normally see that. Okay. Oh, we have two more plugins. Well, we're at time, so I need to go quickly. Okay, this next one is by my friend Corey Moss, who goes by Gelform uh, in the WordPress plugin directory. Uh, Corey has built an interesting little plugin called Crop Express, and what he's trying to do here, and this is the first version of this plugin, uh, and what he's trying to do is make the process of cropping images easier for users. Now, you probably know, like if, especially if you work with non-technical clients, they're always asking, well, why can't, why is this image bigger than this image and this blog grid and blah blah blah, and why is it so hard? And they're they're not wrong. Like it, it can be complicated, and a lot of times we as developers have to do some things on the back end to make sure the right image sizes are, you know, are in different or in the right spots and all of that. So uh, what Corey is trying to do here with Crop Express is to make that whole process easier. Now, the, the way he's approaching this is from a very opinionated way. In other words, he's, he is prescribing some built-in image sizes for the most common uh, aspect ratios. Now, this is the first, this is 1.0. This is the first version of the plugin. 
Uh, he has asked in the plugin description to look, I want, I want input. We're going to improve this. It's going to get better. But right out of the gate, what this plugin is going to do is make it easy for non-technical users to get all the images the same size when they upload them into WordPress. And that's a good thing. So let me show you how this works. There are some drawbacks, which I'll get to as well in this early version. So let's activate Crop Express. And let's just go in here and uh, edit a blog post. And let's just change out a featured image so you can see how this works. Yeah, there's something going on with WP Nathan because this stuff is starting to take a long time to load. All right, so notice this is a brand new blog post that does not have a featured image. And see, this is set up now to say select and crop an image. So let's select our image. Oh, look, we have some pre prescribed, opinionated image aspect ratios. Uh, let's get an image from the media library first. We'll just pick one. Uh, I think it was this one that was the original one. Uh, now, is it a square, 16 by 9, 9 by 16, 4 by 3, or 3 by 4? And are we going to crop it as a square or a circle? Uh, so let's make this a 16 by 9 square. We'll hit crop it. Ah, and look. I'm going to zoom out until my image fits. Set the image. Wasn't that easy? So you said, but I wanted a different size and I wanted big, you know, panorama or whatever. Now I didn't select square, Christine. I select 16 by nine and a square image on the, the ends, not a circle. So if I wanted it square, there was a square selection in the top row. I wanted it 16 by nine. So there's only a few image aspect ratios right now. I can imagine there'll be more. Or maybe there'll be a settings page where you can turn on certain predefined things. Um, but it's super easy to use. And that's what he's going for um, is I want to make this as easy to use for non-technical users as possible. And I think he's done that. Uh, so especially like <laughs> I want, you know, how many of you have a WooCommerce store and the images are all over the place in image sizes? Like they're everywhere. Like some are this way and some are that way and some are, you know, and I just want them all to be square. Well, if you would put this in at the beginning and tell them to select square when they upload that featured image, boom, they can put it in the square, hit the button and it's a square. Uh, yeah, very handy for non-tech people. Again, the downside, very limited in choices right now, but uh, this is definitely going to be one to watch because Corey is a brilliant developer and uh, I believe he's really going to build this into something cool. So. That is Crop Express from Crop Express, who is my friend Corey Moss. All right. Last but not least, another very interesting plugin. Uh, this is uh, a combination of work from Adam Prizer, WP Crafter, and Sujay Pawar, who is the founder of Brainstorm Force, the team behind Astra and the Ultimate Add ons plugins. Uh, they have come together to produce a service with a plugin called Sure Triggers. So this is aiming at replacing Zapier for WordPress users. And they are, they're doing some, uh, some good work here. Now, usually um, we don't do plugins on the plugin roundup that require the connection to some external service. This one though was so cool that I thought you would be interested in it. So uh, we've done similar plugins like Uncanny Automator and other ones like that that run these automations within WordPress. Like when a post is published, then put it out here or put it in the spreadsheet or do, you know, update this, whatever, like Zapier, but for WordPress. And uh, this is a really, really well to me from what I've seen. And again, I haven't spent hours in it, but as I was clicking through and kind of evaluating, this looks very, very promising. So let's just activate this and I'll show you how it works. Sure Triggers is the name. Uh, it's of the same family of products like Sure Cart. Maybe you've seen that from uh, Adam Prizer and Sujay and their teams. So this is Sure Triggers. So we'll activate this. I think I already connected this to an account. 
see if it comes up. Yes. Okay. So this is not what you see when you'll first turn on the plugin. When you first activate it for the first time, it's going to step you through a, hey, go set up your account on suretriggers.com. And then we're going to connect it all up. It takes, it's really quick. It was no problem whatsoever. Then you pop back on this dashboard where your account with Sure Triggers is connected to this WordPress site. Uh, so they give you, um, I'm on the, 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 the pro plan is free for 28 days. Uh, so you get 20,000 tasks and 100 different automations at the pro plan. Um, the pricing details, I've given you a link to that. Um, when it rolls back out of pro and into free, it's going to be five automations, 1,000 tasks a month with three days of log. Still pretty good for some basic automations. Um, this one is going to be uh, on a monthly basis, you know, 10 bucks a month, like not bad. $99 a year. I mean, very, very affordable. Uh, a lot cheaper, by the way, than Zapier. Zapier is three times this cost. Uh, this might be able to replace Zapier for you. It just depends. So if we were going to create a new automation, um, if you've used Zapier in the past, this is going to be very familiar. So we're going to add a trigger and we can connect to all of these things. Like look at all these WordPress properties. Like Beaver, this is for a Beaver Builder form, uh, you know, affiliate WP, the Surecart things, Amelia, if you're using that calendar. Cart flows, EDD, Elementor forms, Fluent CRM, like all these things. Even external thing, there's member press for those of you that like member press, Notion, Stripe, you know, all of these different things, right? Then these are going to be, um, these are not a trigger, but a, a next action where you can connect to some of these other things here. So lots of different things. Let's just say if WordPress, if there's a comment approved, if a new comment on a post, if the post status is updated, you got all these options. So it's like an if this, then that, it'll fire it off. Oh, can you add a Zapier trigger? Is Zapier in here? No, but I think a webhook is. Yeah, you can use, if you, um, you can have this fire on a Zapier webhook. Yeah, that would work. So it's basically when something happens, then do something else. Uh, just like Zapier or Uncanny or some of those things. So um, this is definitely one to play around with. Uh, I've got some ideas for how I might use it in some sites. Um, yeah, pr pretty generous free level for some basic automations. And then uh, the paid versions aren't that bad. So, oh, and also the neat thing about those paid versions is you could use it on five websites. So $100 a year is going to cover five websites with these, with a, with a total tasks for all those websites of this amount. Pretty interesting. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of the plugin roundup for February 2022 and or 23, February 2023. And we end as we always do with a vote. Uh, one vote, one vote only, please. What is your favorite roundup uh, plugin of the roundup? Turnstile, triggers. Let me hear from you in the chat. What is your vote for the best plugin? Crop, crop, blocks, crop, triggers, 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 add to calendar, store credit, triggers, crop, 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 turnstile triggers. Looks like crop is definitely the winner. Turnstile a second. Turnstile, well, triggers and turnstile, the three of those. I'm saying this out loud because that way we can remind ourselves what the, vote, what the votes are when we go back and compile these votes for the best of, which will happen in June. We do that every six months. If you're new to the plugin roundup, we take these votes and uh, every six months we do a best of the previous six months best, uh, based on these votes that come in at the end of each webinar. All right, folks, that is going to wrap it up for us today. Do not forget that we have a great webinar coming up tomorrow, which I talked about at the top of the hour. It is a free webinar about using AI tools in WordPress. It is going to be a lot of fun. I spent the morning preparing for this and having a lot of fun with ChatGPT. And I think I'm going to show you some things either you haven't seen or you might not have seen this way, give you some ideas on how to use ChatGPT and other AI tools inside of WordPress. Be sure to sign up for that if you haven't. I'll see you back here for that one tomorrow at 1 o'clock Central Time here on iThemes Training, where we go further together.